Welcome fellow YouTube traveler and thank you for stopping by at my channel. Let me tell you what will be serviced today at my workbench. Well, it is well-known German Panther tank, which is kind of special set from also known RFM manufacturer. This model has a highly detailed full interior and can be built in two versions, as for 1944 or 1945 production year. Still not impressed? Huh. But this model has not only the full interior equipment, but also gives you the opportunity to at least see anything after assembling and painting thanks to clear plastic parts, which are in the set. I'm truly and honestly impressed by this set. I have been playing with those clear parts and they give you maximal options for what and how to show inside. Also, <laughs> I mean, look at the size of this box. While horizontal dimensions are rather standard, the height is 15 centimeters. I better show you what I mean, I better start with presentation of parts for this build. This time, as there are so many parts in so many sprues, I have decided to start with good planning. First, I have divided build in two stages. First, lower hull plus interior and second turret plus upper hull. Going back to what we will use, don't ask me why, but I also bought a metal barrel and Edward detailing set with wheel masking, fender covers and other PE details. I also bought Panther Crew set post for interior use. Yes! Let's start with the whole assembly. While the work will flow in the background, let me share with you what we are dealing with in here. Well, if you choose to follow the set instructions step by step, you will need to start with turret assembly. Next comes the full upper hull build and only at the end you will take care of lower hull with all the interior with, let me remind you, huge engine and not even smaller transmission unit. I'm sorry, but I just don't get this order of work. I can give many reasons why you shouldn't go this way, but let me give you just this one. You can't finish the upper hull assembly without painting, right? But to paint you should mask first the upper hull part, which is made of clear material and you should already know where to mask and where not if you want to show finished interior. Hmm but we have no interior to fit and measure first. You see where I'm going with this? In such complex, complex projects, it is crucial to make a plan before even touching the sprues.
let me tell you one more thing about preparation process in this build. I started with cutting out all needed parts from spruce and sorted them accordingly to steps in instruction. This long journey through cutting, sanding and sorting gave me an opportunity to carefully think over steps needed in this build. Because, believe me, without a good plan it is just impossible to successfully accomplish such a complex project.
I just love the level of complexity of this set. Parts are multiple and detailed, but you have this strong feeling that this is made to help you build a better model, not to make your life harder. All in here just makes sense. Okay, finally a small break from fiddly parts. Let's spray some colors and give some life to our model. I have seen few patterns of Panther's interior colors consisting of white, light blue and full red. I have chosen this which will bring possibly most amount of light to interior. We want to see well all of those internal details after all. Okay, so the primary painting is behind us. And now, don't you just hate masking? Yeah, me too. But when you mask, paint and wait a bit, what comes next? Christmas! I mean, unpacking. And this is the part I like so much, I even have fun watching it right now with you. Ok, so now we will give some depth to colors. Here is a cooler unit just after base painting and here another one already dry brushed with the use of light sea grey color. To achieve such an effect I damp a paintbrush into paint and then swipe it nearly dry on the paper towel. Paintbrush should leave a slight shadow of a color when brushed on the surface. To make sure if everything is ok I sometimes swipe the brush on my finger just before touching the model.
it is very important to control the amount of paint on the brush, because it is easy to overdo this process. But if you do it right, result speaks for itself. Let's go back to dry brushing, but this time we will use dark metallic color. It will bring even more depth to parts image and will make surface even more natural and alive. As this is a metallic color and correcting might be painful, it is better to be even more cautious with paint amount on the brush. Once again, looks crisp, natural and full of life. And we didn't even start weathering. Normally I would skip showing you the part about decals, but this time we have something different. Let me show you how I handle placing instrument decals to, for this instance, concave surfaces. In here we have another modeling surprise. We have a decal for an emergency kit, but there is a belt in the way. Huh, I measured the size of the belt, cut the decal, apply some water, position it well.
and here we go! Nice and easy! Ok, let's leave those tiny elements for a hall which is newly painted and waiting for signs of a real life inside of that tank in battlefield reality. In short soldier words, let's pit and scratch this shiny thing. Inside of the hole I decided to use for the first chipping color Hull Red, as this was a primary coat just under the paint, whatever color it was. As you see for chipping and aging the surface I use alternatively three methods in rounds. Sponge chipping like you can see here. Detailed scratch painting with the use of a brush, like you can see in here. Or dry brushing, which you have already seen while I was painting, for example, transmission unit. Oh, let me remind you here in the corner. some depth to corners, bands and rivets of the whole interior, I used Tamiya Black Panel Liner. It did its job just right, but at the same time due to some coverage issues with my varnish, it messed up a little bit of colors. Aye. Anyway, I will deal with those colors later. Let's do something positive and have fun while assembling some of already painted parts to the hole. I will show you here how I handled mounting internal ammo cases. 
there are six of them in total. I have assembled them leaving the bottom part unglued for painting. Thanks to this, visible joints after gluing painted parts will be hidden and unseen below the floor surface. There you go! Please note that I haven't put decals yet to shells. Hmm. And here you have all of ammunition boxes in their places. Which was not an easy job to do, let me tell you that. Phew! I just love those moments when parts come together after painting process. You see the holistic effects of all previous steps. the surface with all those paints and varnishes, it is good to deepen connecting holes on the model. It might be very helpful while final mounting of parts. Let's arm our panther to the teeth, literally. I mean, only on one side, the second one will be loaded only to the thumb level, not to block the view of the interior. I just couldn't resist. First, I wanted to paint all of figures together as one, but at the same time I really wanted to see some more life in this model at the end of this part of this build. Well, there you have it. Now I can give you a ride, because we have a qualified driver in here already.
I left ammo bikes for final assembly activity. They are mounted in a very delicate way and falling off is the only thing they can do at this stage so I wouldn't like to encourage them by unneeded actions, so to say. The interior still needs some more play with washing effects and this is not the final word before the finish of this build. At least, this time, varnish works just fine and all dirting effects are reversible. Phew, what a ride, this is a model like no other, it drained my attention a lot for last few weeks, I tell you that. It reminds me my 1-200 scale misery build and I completely love this set. I mean, just look at that, it brings so much fun to watch all of those tiny parts to together in one eye-catching view. Oh boy completely worth the effort, I can tell you that. And what if I remind you that's just the half of the journey? <laughs> I can't wait to see what comes next and how will it look in the end. <laughs> if you wish to see the turret and upper hull build and would like also to see the panther in its final appearance, please join me in the next episode. The easiest way not to miss another episode is just to subscribe to the channel. As always, thank you for joining me on my workbench struggles, please hit like button if you like what you see, stay cool, keep modeling and have fun doing so. Ciao!